Um, what I will do is give you a brief overview of Juniper Networks, um, tell you something about the company, tell you what we do, what products we build, what we stand for, what our philosophy is, etc. I know that if you have a service provider background, you probably have heard of Juniper Networks already. Um, there are probably also a lot of people in the audience and maybe in the panel as well that have more of an enterprise background. And in that case, uh, Juniper may be a little bit of a newer entity to you. So in terms of uh, size, um, there's 8,700 of us. Um, we're here at corporate headquarters in Sunnyvale. We have um, research and development offices in Massachusetts, Westford. We have one in Bangalore, one in India, one in Canada, and then 50 offices across the world for uh, sales and support. Um, most people know that we have a service provider background. That's how we got started in life. We started building routers for wireline service providers. Uh, we grew with them um, as they moved into the wireless space. Um, but what fewer people know is that we also have uh, these days large presence in the enterprise market, uh, mostly with our EX switches uh, and our SRX firewalls. And, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a later slide. In terms of uh, financial size, we're about four and a half billion dollars in revenue. And I know we're not here for the financial side of things, but I mentioned it anyway, because I wanted to point out that Juniper is certainly not a small company. It's not a startup anymore. We're big enough to do big things such as develop our own silicon, which is a multi-year investment. But we're certainly not nearly as big as some of our big 800 pound gorilla competitors, which means that we have to concentrate on very specific things and focus if we want to be successful. So what we chose to focus on is, first of all, we're a pure networking player. And within networking, we focus on routing, switching, and security. Okay. We started out with routing. Our very first product back in 98 um, was the M4 router. It was the first router that completely separated the control plane from the forwarding plane by doing the forwarding plane in an ASIC and Junos, the control plane, on a standard x86 server. Then, um, I believe it was in 2004, we acquired a security company called NetScreen. That brought us two things. First of all, a security product, and second of all, our entry into the enterprise market. Okay. So what we did is we took all of the <coughs> security features from NetScreen and integrated them into Junos, and we integrated the data plane of the security function in our Juniper Silicon. So we recently released the first two terabits per second firewall, which was possible because we moved some of the functions into silicon. Then, uh, a couple of years later, I think it was in 2008, um, we moved into switching as well. And what we did there was um, we enhanced Junos, our operating system, with all the features that you need for layer two switching, so Mac learning, spanning tree, uh, all those kinds of features. Uh, and then we, from the forwarding plane, we implemented the forwarding plane using merchant silicon. So on the software side, at this point, after we've done all of these things, we have a single unified operating system, Junos, that does all of the routing functionality, the very advanced routing functionality that you're used to from a carrier, BGP, OSPF, ISPF, ISIS, and also uh, things such as MPLS, LDP, RCP, et cetera. And it also has all the security functions from NetScreen and also has all the switching functions that we added with the EX. So it's one unified operating system across the, the whole product line. On the silicon side, um, you, know, you, you notice that we use a mix of merchant silicon and Juniper custom silicon. Um, if merchant silicon meets all of the, re the requirements for the use case or for the customer, then we use merchant silicon. If we can add differentiation or by adding additional functionality or by getting rid of some of the compromises that you have to make, then we're certainly not shy uh, and perfectly capable to develop our own silicon. And in the first presentation by Doug, we'll, we'll talk about what some of that differentiation is. And then the last thing is systems. Um, and this is the most underappreciated part. It's actually very difficult to put all of these hardware components together in a system that 
has all the right cooling and power um, parameters um, that are necessary in a carrier environment. So one example of that that will come up in the 10K presentation is um, that we use a very, esot a very, very esoteric type of memory called hybrid, hybrid memory cube on our new um, 10K switch that we use instead of the traditional uh, DDR memory or the traditional TCAM memory. And that allows us to do three terabits per second and at the same time still have very large forwarding tables and very rich functionality. Um, now, Juniper's philosophy or Juniper's mission is to always be best in breed or always lead in innovation ahead of our competitors in, uh, in, in the area of performance and functionality and features and automation and APIs. And we have been on this hamster wheel um, ever since we got started. Every time we bring up a new, every time we release a new chip, we're already working on the next chip that has bigger fibs, more functionality, more density, uh, so that you can essentially get double the ports at the same price. And as a result of that, the cost per bit or the cost per port has been going down uh, tremendously over time. And we will continue to do that. For the next 20 years, we'll continue to be on that hamster wheel and we'll be continuing to stri try to stay ahead of our competition. But one thing that we've realized recently is, uh, over the past couple of years, is that the cost for operating those networks has not been going down. The cost of the people that run these networks has been going up. Uh, salaries are not going down. These networks are getting more complex. So over the past couple of years, we've started um, also investing a lot on the software side in what we call the network intelligence and control part. So we have products, uh, we have traditional network management products such as Space, of course, but we've also acquired a company called Contrail that has implemented an SDN controller to provide that higher level of control on top of the network so that you can stop managing the network by logging into individual boxes and you can manage the network at a higher level of abstraction, integrating both the virtual and the physical network. And we've also started adding very rich analytics capabilities both to that control platform and our switches so that we can stream very rich telemetry and create a feedback loop where the network automatically reacts to events in the network. So the way that Pradeep, um, our CTO, uh, describes that is that on the x-axis we have the hamster wheel that we've always been on. Just continually increasing density, features, performance, bandwidth, etc. But now we're also climbing up the y-axis by adding more intelligence and automation to both our control plane platforms and uh, the network devices themselves. The last thing I'd like to do is give you a brief overview of our port product portfolio so that you can see where the topics that we're going to talk about fit in. Um, so as I mentioned, we have routing, switching, and security, and then SDN and management at the top. <coughs> On the routing side, our flagship product right now is the MX router, which is used at the edge. At the edge, you need very rich intelligence and very flexible hardware. Okay? At the edge, the protocols are constantly changing. Um, there are a lot of services that are provided, both business services and subscriber management services. And you need very large fibs because, for example, you might have many routing instances for VPNs. So in that space, we use uh, a flavor of our own silicon that's called Trio. It is micro-programmable, which means that we can add new features without respinning the hardware. And it has massive forwarding tables, tens of millions of routes in the fib. Then we have the PTX series, which is our packet transport router. That is our router that is optimized for the core. Uh, it has specific features that are uh, optimized for the core, such as optical integration. Um, it's optimized for very high density and very high throughput. Uh, and it can get away with slightly smaller fibs, um, about 2 million routes, which is enough for internet peering, but maybe not enough for edge services such as VPNs. And then finally, we have the ACX series of routers, which is our series of routers that is used for access and aggregation <coughs> networks. Uh, for example, mobile backhaul. These uh, routers have uh, features that are smaller. They're smaller routers, and they have features that are specifically targeted at that use case. For example, 
they have uh, car uh, carrier ethernet, they have uh, precision timing, and there are flavors of it that are hardened for outdoor usage. Okay? So that's our routing portfolio. On the switching side, we started with EX, which is our uh, switching product line that is targeted at the enterprise. Uh, there are many different flavors of it with different speeds and feeds and ports. Um, that line of switches has features that is optimized for the enterprise. So it has features such as uh, power over ethernet, uh, the ability to stack them and create virtual chassis, etc. Then our QFX series of uh, uh, switches is the series of switches that is optimized for the data center. Um, so these don't have the features that you typically only need in enterprise. They don't have power over ethernet, for example, but they're focused on having the highest possible density. And we have two flavors of the QFX line. We have the QFX line that is targeted at the top of rack. Um, and the most recent flavor of that is the QFX 5100. All of our top of rack switches use um, merchant silicon. Uh, we've used different vendors over time. Right now, we're using Broadcom Trident 2. So one of the things that you will notice is that most of our competing vendors use the exact same silicon. And our switches look very similar in the speeds and feeds to the switches that you've probably seen before. The differentiation, though, is in terms of the operating that system that runs on it. We run Junos on it, which is the exact same Junos that we inherited from the carrier um, use cases. So our switches, despite the fact that they run in the data center, run BGP, OSPF, ISIS, etc. Um, and that means that that used to be not important, but now it's important because that's how new data centers are being built. And finally, we've got a white box switch, um, which is a, box, a switch that you can buy from uh, one of the merchant, one of the uh, contract manufacturers, and then put Junos on top of it. And we've got SRX uh, firewalls, um, little branch firewalls, and very high-end firewalls as well. And finally. One thing that we have decided as a company is that we will create virtual versions for every physical platform that we have. Okay, so for, we already have a physical MX. We now also have a virtual MX, which does the exact same functionality, just running in a virtual machine on a standard x86 server. We have a physical SRX. We now also have a virtual SRX that does the exact same thing. And we'll actually demo both of these. As a strategy, we will have virtual versions of everything. Now, sometimes it might not make sense to put one of those in production just yet. For example, we have a uh, PTX router that is uh, 24 terabits per second. It uh, doesn't really make sense to put that in production in a virtual, form 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 virtual format. But we're doing it anyway because it's very useful for people to train and learn and, and validate networks. <laughs> 